So in chapter 12, we're all about functions, and in 12.1 and 12.2, we introduce a few concepts about functions. Now, we've been dealing with functions for a long time. Functions are just these things that we can graph on an x, y axis. Typically, our functions were linear, lines, or quadratic, parabolas. And we just finished a whole chapter about graphing and working with quadratic functions. That was what your homework was on uh, from last time, was graphing those parabolas, yes? Yep. Cool, all right. Well, now we can learn a couple things about functions in general. The first thing that we need to know about functions is that we can add, subtract, multiply, and even divide two functions. Here's what all this means. I've already put this on the board for you. But this just says, if I want to add two functions, by the way, what are our functions here? Well, what are the letters? So f and g just stand for two functions. Remember the function names, right? We have usually f, g, h, stuff like that. This just says the function f plus the function g, all you need to do to do that, to do that operation is add those two functions, that's it. So if we want to have f plus g of x, that's how you would say that, f plus g of x, we just add f of x plus g of x, are you with me? If we want f minus g of x, that's just f of x minus g of x, in that order. If we want f times g of x, that's just f of x times g of x. Also, last one, if we want to do f over g of x, that's f of x divided by g of x. By the way, I said one thing over here, I haven't completed this statement. What can't g of x be equal to? Why? You can't ever divide by zero. So the only thing that g of x can't be equal to is zero. Are you with me on that? You can't have a fraction over zero. That doesn't make sense. So this is going to go back to our domain problems. You remember those domain issues from like a long time ago? We'd say the denominator can't be equal to zero. We set it not equal to zero and we solve it. Do you remember that? Yeah. It's not a hard thing. It's just one other thing you've got to deal with for this one particular issue right here. So g of x can't be equal to zero. Now, I've got a simple example. Let's see if we can go through that example and figure this stuff out. So firstly, we're going to try to do all four of these operations with those two functions, f of x and g of x. What is f of x, please? X Good. What's g of x? x Great. And I want f plus g of x. So this just says refer back to your functions. Add them together. f plus g of x would be this one. We're, I'm going to see if you can figure out the rest of them. But f plus g of x would be, what's the first function then? X plus so I'm going to write x plus 3. I'm going to write it in parentheses because it's a function itself. Okay, It's saying this is where it came from. I've got x plus 3 as f of x. Are you with me on that? And then what, am I, what operation am I doing? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division? Addition. I'm adding what function? 3x. Raise your hand if you see where those things come from. Good, so f plus g of x says, hey, take f of x, add g of x, and combine some like terms. It's addition. Do I need to change any signs? Yeah. So essentially, I can just drop the parentheses, combine like terms. And that's going to give me, what's uh, x plus 3 plus 3x minus 1? Do the combining like terms for me. Tell me what you're going to get. So here's what we'd say. f plus g of x. That's how you write it. f plus g of x is 4x plus 2. That's the function you get when you add those two functions together. Nod your head if you're okay with that. You don't need to simplify? This is simplified. It's as far as you can go. Can't pull out a two. No, you don't need to factor it. You just, you're just combining those functions together. Uh -huh. You okay with this so far? Yeah. Let's try the f minus g of x. Uh, first thing, is it important to put the f first in this case? Yeah, addition really doesn't care, right? Because it's commutative. But subtraction and division are not commutative. So it depends on what comes first. So what has to absolutely come first? Yeah, because that's our f. I'm going to put it in parentheses. You're going to see why the parentheses are important. And what's going to come next? Minus, minus what? Minus three. Hey, by the way, look over here at the board. Am I supposed to distribute <coughs> these? No. no. When do you distribute? Minus yeah, not addition subtraction. We don't want to distribute those. We don't want to foil those is what I mean. Now, what's going to happen with this? This expression here, what do I need to do to this to get rid of those parentheses? Yeah, we're going to multiply that negative inside. So the x plus 3 stays the same. However, what am I going to get next? Minus 3x plus 1. Ah, plus 1. Do you see where the plus 1 is coming from? 
You all, you all see where that's coming from? That's important to have those parentheses, right? Because if you don't have those parentheses, if you just if you didn't have these up here, you'd have a minus one still, and that's going to give you a different constant at the end of your expression. You okay so far with this? Okay, so when we combine these, do your combined like terms. What are you going to get when you combine like terms? 2x? 4x? Negative 2. Ah, negative 2x, because we did do it with the sign. Negative 2x, and, and what was the other one? Plus 4. Plus 4. So the key on these things, you've already added functions together. You just did them without calling them functions. You've already done it. It's combined like terms. You've already subtracted them. It's called combined like terms. You just have to make sure about your signs, right? Make sure your signs are correct. So we'd say f minus g of x, <coughs> in this case, is negative 2x plus 4. Let's see what f times g of x does. If we have f times g of x, it says take your f of x, multiply it by your g of x. That's what these rules say. This is all it says. It's a pretty simple idea. It says add your functions, subtract your functions, multiply your functions, and divide your functions. That's really it. We're just practicing that over here. So we've already added, we've subtracted. Now let's see if we can multiply our functions. What's the first function we're going to have here? Okay, that's in parentheses. And what am I doing? Okay, and what am I going to multiply by? 3x minus 2. Good. Now, of course, when I don't have an operation in between them, so it looks similar to these, except the operation is different. This is plus, this is minus when there's nothing. That means we're multiplying. How do I get rid of those parentheses when I'm multiplying? Yeah, here's where I, fold. Here's where I distribute. So if we were to distribute, can you tell me the first thing that I'm going to get, please? x squared. Good, I like the x squared. Awesome. Keep going. Minus x. Minus x because we're doing x times negative 1. We're getting minus x. And then what? Plus 9x. Good, we got 3 times 3x and then? Minus 3. Ah, minus 3. Once we combine some like terms, we'll get 3x squared. I know that. What's the next thing we'll get? Plus 3x. Minus 3. Cool. That's as far as I can go. I don't need you to factor. All we're doing right here is doing this operations with these two functions. So we'd say in this case that f times g of x. is, well, that expression that we just created. Hey, let's do the last one. Last one is f over g of x. By the way, are you okay with these three examples so far? How do you hope you are? Okay, so far you've done all this, right? Done all this before. f over g of x. f over g of x says, you're just going to take f of x, put it on top of g of x. That's it. So in this one, this might be the easiest one for you to do. What's going to go on the numerator, f of x or g of x? Is it important to put that one on the numerator? Yeah, yeah. It really is. So we're going to have x plus 3. On the denominator, we'll have g of x, 3x minus 1. Hey, can I cross out the x's? No. Can I cross out the 3's? Yeah. Even if there were a 3 here, could I cross out the 3's? No, because they're all connected by addition and subtraction, right? So unless you can factor these, which you can't, you can't factor either one of those, then you're, you're essentially done. You can't do anything with that. This is the expression. It's a rational function. Now, the only other thing that you've got to do, you've got to give me the domain. So right now, this is it. This is f over g of x. It's already listed for you. No, no work at all, right? That's kind of that's cool. But you do have to state the domain. And here's how you state the domain if you don't remember this. The domain says, can the numerator be equal to 0? A numerator. Yes. yes. Absolutely. The top of a fraction, no problem. How about the bottom of a fraction? Mm -hmm. No. And so what the domain said, this is what this says right here, g of x can't equal 0. It says that you're going to set your denominator not equal to 0. Do you remember doing that? Mm -hmm. We'd say, oh, look here, set it not equal to 0 because that's the one thing we cannot have it equal to. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And then you solve it like any other equation. How would you solve that one? Add 1, and then you would do what? So we're going to get x equals, or actually x is not equal to 1 third. That right there is your domain. It says x will be all real numbers except, except which number? Wait, why, why can't we have, think about it, why can't we have 1 third here? It's going to turn that. 
Uh, so the only number in the world that if I plug in here that makes it bad is if I plug in one third. You with me? Anything else is going to work. Zero is going to work because I have zero minus one. It's negative one. It's fine. But right, a negative three would work because I have zero up here but not down here. That's fine. But if I plug in one third, I get three times one third. That's one. Minus one would be zero, and I can't have zero in the bottom of a fraction. That's why we have that listed right there. Would you raise your hand feel okay on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of the functions? Good, good. Hey, that's half our lesson right there. That's the first half. Now, the second half, by the way, I told you these were going to be quick, right? These are quick sections. Uh, the second half of this section says there's one other thing we can do besides adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. We can also compose functions. Now, if you think about the word compose, what's compose mean to you? Well, what can you compose? You've composed things before. You've heard of people compose things. What, what's that mean? Create. Create, Create or, or put together. You compose music, right? Mm -hmm. You make a composition paper. You're putting stuff together. That's what we're going to do with our functions. We're going to put them together. Besides addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, what we're going to be doing is basically, here's what composition does, takes one function and puts it inside another function. It says, oh, here's one function. I'm going to augment it by inserting another function into it. That's what composition does. So we're going to be composing functions. Composition of functions. And basically, I'll give you the English on this. This is putting one function inside another function. This is still 12 one. It sure is. Hey, you remember when I tell you how to do certain things? I say, do this a certain way, otherwise you're probably going to make a mistake on it. Remember when I say stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And it usually turns out to be true, right? Yeah. Usually. This is one of those times. Okay, do this this way. Uh, this will really, really help you out on your, your problems. Now, these pro the, this section can be super, super easy. Or if you don't remember what I'm talking about, it's going to be pretty hard. Like, I don't even know what he's talking about here. Here's what the notation looks like. Here's what a composition of functions looks like. You have a function name, just like f over here. Then you have a little, a little teeny open circle. Now, the, the key thing here, this can look really similar to this one, right? What's the difference between this and that? Yeah, that's right. This does not mean multiplication. All right, this does. I know that's a little confusing, right? We have a little dot and we have an open circle. That doesn't mean multiplication, it's an open circle. It means of. Of. It's, it means a composition. This is f of g of x. So say this with me. This is f of g of x. f of g of x. That's what it says. And little note, not multiplication. That's not multiplication. It's a composition. 